A very good evening to you all and welcome to Night Prayer. Wherever you are this night, whatever this day is held for you, uh, we are united in the gift of the Holy Spirit. My name is Caroline and I am the vicar here at St Peter and St Paul's. And so we now light our candle to remind us of the light of Christ which shines in our hearts this night. Our worship tonight comes from the Church of England, from Common Worship Night Prayer. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. So now we take time to think back on the day just gone. We remember where we've been, what we've done who we've shared this day with. And through it all, we notice where God has been present and active in our life today. Conscious of the times when we have failed, we confess together. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And some uh, a prayer from the Iona community. From Bethlehem to Nazareth, from Jordan to Jericho, from Bethany to Jerusalem, from then to now, come Lord Jesus. To heal the sick, to mend the brokenhearted, to comfort the disturbed, to disturb the comfortable, to cleanse the temple, to liberate faith from convention. Come, Lord Jesus. To carry the cross, to lead the way, to shoulder the sin of the world and take it away. Come, Lord Jesus. Today, tonight, to this place, to us. Come, Lord Jesus. Our psalm this evening is Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You mark out my journeys and my resting place and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue but you, O oh Lord, know it all together. You encompass me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too high that, so high that I cannot attain it. Where then can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night, 
even darkness is no darkness with you. The night is as clear as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvellous are your works, my soul knows well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my form as yet unfinished. Already in your book were all my members written. As day by day they were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How deep are your counsels to me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I count them, they are more in number than the sand, and at the end I am still in your presence. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. God's word to us tonight from the Bible, John chapter 5, verses 17 to 30. Jesus said, My father is still working, and I also am working. For this reason, the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because he was not only breaking the Sabbath, but he was also calling himself God, equal to his own father. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, the Son can do nothing on his own, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, the Son does likewise. The Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself is doing, and he will show him greater works than these, so that you will be astonished. Indeed, just as the Father raises, raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whomsoever he wishes. The Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, so that all may honour the Son just as they honour the Father. Anyone who does not honour honor the Son does not honour the Father who sent him. Very truly I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life, and does not come under judgment, but has passed from death to life. Very truly I tell you, the hour is coming, and is now here, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For just as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to also have life in himself. And he has given him authority to execute judgment because he is the son of man. Do not be astonished at this. For the hour is coming when all who are in their graves will hear the voice, hear his voice and will come out. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just, because I seek to do not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. And the Nunc Dimittis, the Song of Simeon. 
Christ died for us, so that whether we wake or sleep, we might live with him. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Christ died for us so that whether we wake or sleep, we might live in him. So we come before God with our prayers of intercession. So let us pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. And we thank you for the gift of faith. For that great knowledge that uh, you walk alongside us through every circumstance of life. We thank you that you are always more ready to hear than we are to speak. So often we fail to turn to you, yet you are always there. We thank you that you are the loving Father who welcomed your child back, who welcomes your child back home when we have gone astray. We thank you, Father, for the gift of faith and everything that it means to us. Father God, we pray for your church that we will be alive and active with a real desire to share the faith that we found with those around us. We continue to pray for our vision, the vision that you have given us, the will that, uh, that you have uh, presented us to grow your church, to grow it numerically, spiritually, in faith and in service. Father God, we pray that we will welcome more and more people into our church family. We pray that at this time of, of um, approaching Holy Week and Easter, may those celebrations just come to life for us, but also the hope that it brings, may it be alive in our community. Father God, we also pray for our mission to our children and to our young people. Lord, we thank you for our church school, for all the pupils there, their families, and the staff, James the head, and Donna, the Chair of Governors. Our loving Father, we pray that more and more those children, that school community, will know the amazing love that you have for them. Bless them at their visit to church in the coming weeks to worship for Easter, but also for the children as they learn more and more about church and belonging to your church family. Our Father God, we hold before you um, our Sunday kids also, those, those children who we uh, cherish as part of our church family. May we continue to nurture the faith within them that they may know this gift of knowing you in their lives. And today we especially pray for our plans for uh, the youth group starting on Sunday. We thank you for those five young people who've already said that they're coming. We think too of, of others that you would 
look to draw into your family and pray that they will find their home there too. Bless those of us who will lead. We just pray that within our young people, they may know the gift of faith. At a time of a great change in their lives, they will know the gift of knowing you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we hold before you the people of our world and the people of our nation. Especially at this time, we think of those who are struggling with the cost of living. We particularly pray for those who are unemployed at this time. Those who are seeking employment, help them to find a place where they can truly uh, flourish and, and use their gifts and contribute. As well as being able to have the means for which that they, they and their, their families can survive. We hold before you to those who would love to work but are unable through ill health through disability, through circumstances, through caring for others. We pray that they will get the support that they need to recognise their circumstances. We hold before you to those who are caught um, within the gaps in the benefit system that who are finding a tough few weeks uh, being able to afford the necessities. We pray for, for justice and fairness within the way that welfare support is given. We thank you, Father, for the work of food banks and other grassroots groups that, that meet those at the point of need. But we pray for a longer lasting um, solution. that people may not fall into these gaps where, gaps of worry and stress, that they may be able to have the stability in their lives to, to have the necessities that they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father God, we hold before you our community. We thank you for the life of Mansfield, for its neighbourliness, for the gifts and talents within our people, for um, the schools, the shops, the businesses, the organisation, organisations which make this community work. We hold before you our own neighbours, those who we live alongside, those that we know, those that we don't. May we be good neighbours to one another. We pray too for those areas in our town where life is particularly difficult, where perhaps there are people feel unsafe in their neighbourhoods or feel um, that their boundaries aren't protected. Let's pray that our town will be a place that is a beacon of hope where all can flourish young and old, and those of all circumstances and situations. At this time we remember too um, all those affected by the fire um, on Nottingham Road last weekend. We pray for those whose business has been destroyed, for everything that they're going through, everything they're doing at this time. Just pray that that they may find hope and direction for the future. We pray too for those whose lives were disrupted by that event and, and pray um, for, for stability for them once again. We also thank you for um, our emergency services, particularly our fire service, who worked so hard uh, that day to bring 
uh, the fire under control. We thank you for their dedication, their skill, their, their bravery in the face of, of danger. We thank you for everything that they did to support and, they can, and everything they continue to do to keep us safe. We hold before you as well our police. Our police here in Nottinghamshire, but also our police across the country. Particularly at this time when uh, there is, in some forces there is scrutiny. We pray that uh, in thanks for the dedication of our police forces, we'll pray as well that they will be the best that they can be to serve all people, to enable them to feel safe. And we also pray for our ambulance services, our paramedics, our air ambulance, those who are there when an emergency strikes. We thank you for their work, their skill, their dedication. And for the amazing gift of the NHS, Lord, we praise you and pray um, that the NHS will continue to, to flourish and in its, its vision of, of a uh, just um, a just movement, a just initiative where all can um, receive the care that they need at the point of need. We thank you that that vision will flourish and the things that um, weigh the NHS down, Lord, may you alleviate that burden. We pray for all those who have a responsibility to oversee our NHS, that you will um, inspire them with wisdom and truth and justice in all that they do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we thank you that you are a God of healing and wholeness and hope. We thank you that you're always alongside us when times are hard, when times are tough. We thank you that you are always working for good. And we pray that um, you will be bringing your healing touch to all those that we know, know who need um, a healing and wholeness at this time. And in particular, we name before you Leonard, Estelle, Pat, Anne, Brian, Janet and David, Luke and Nikki, Olive, John P, Jill, and anyone else known to ourselves. We thank you, Father, that you are a good Father. And we pray that your loving arms will bring healing and wholeness to all whom we thought of today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God of love and life, we thank you for the lives of those that we love but see no longer, who are now in your eternal care. And at this time, we place into your hands Mabel, May, Daniel, Jean, Norma, Dorothy, Angela, Patricia and Nick and anyone else that we are remembering at this time. And we thank you, Father, for their lives, for everything that they shared with us, everything that they gave to us, the imprint that they leave on their families, their friends, their community. We thank you for their lives and we trust in your goodness as we leave them in your eternal care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Father, we name before you the things that are on our hearts this time, at this time, but perhaps even those things that no one else knows that we are carrying. And we lay them at your feet and ask for your rest and your peace. in the morning that you will help us to bear them again so that 
knowing that you will bear them with us and that you will show us, show us the way. We pray our vision and prayer. Loving God, as you opened your heart to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, open our hearts in welcome, that our church family may be a place for all to belong. Open our hearts in praise, that our music may enrich and deepen our worship. Open our hearts to cherish and encourage our children and young people in faith. Open our hearts to know and serve our wider community with hope. Rooted in Jesus' love, bless and guide us at St Peter and St Paul's as we follow the vision you have given for our life together. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Almighty God, may we, by the prayer and discipline of Lent, enter into the mystery of Christ's sufferings, that by following in the way we may come to share in the glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. Come with the dawning of the day and make yourself known in the breaking of the bread. For the Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. Amen. And a very good night to you all.